Well, I want to share a story and a little history today. So first, the story. Uh, Trudy and I recently arrived a bit early for dinner out with the kids. The restaurant being typically New York, meaning, you know, 30 people were sitting in a space meant for 13, we decided to appetize at an emptier but still cozy Latin American bar a couple of doors down the street. We entered the uh, brilliantly named La Diaspora to excellent classic salsa booming crisply from high-end speakers. The vibe was relaxed yet jubilant, like a party at your best friend's place. The walls were alive with murals celebrating the people, cities, food, and flora of Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, and many, many others. While enjoying a Negra Modelo and jamming with the other patrons, I mean, at one point we all hit the bar with the same pop, ba pop kick in Willie Torino's classic song, Rumbera. A couple of older gentlemen walked in, nodded at the festive atmosphere, smiled, and said to me, great place, isn't it? I smiled back and said, it's fabulous. Grab a cowbell, amigo. They pulled up a couple of stools, <clears throat> and we began talking about our mutual admiration of Latin culture and the sociable atmosphere of the restaurant. Having lived in the neighborhood for decades, they regaled me with a quick history of the bar and its building, reminiscing about a New York I've n never yet somehow always known. We chatted about salsa, the music we all were obviously passionate about. We shared favorite songs and artists and discussed salsa's history as music created from the Afro-Caribbean tradition, itself built from too many cycles of oppression and liberation. We also discussed that salsa and its many subgenres would not exist without the mass migration of Central Americans, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, and others to the United States throughout the 20th century. Which brings us to a little history. U.S. corporate interests in Central and South America caused the migration of people from the region in the 1900s. But that particular colonization is rooted in the American Western expansion a century earlier, which forced millions of indigenous Spanish speakers out of what is now the southwestern United States, further south into the lands American corporations now wanted to exploit. By the 1900s, European plantation owners and burgeoning multinational corporations like United Fruit Company, which is now Chiquita, faced increasing resentment from the indigenous Central and South American people, as well as those they'd previously pushed into the region. So to prevent a complete uprising, rather than paying people decent wages or investing in their communities, the U.S. destroyed people's homes, overthrew democratically elected national leaders, and repurposed military bases and forts for the protection of American corporations. Millions more were forcibly driven from their homes once again. With a deep understanding of the irony of their situation, but few other choices, most people came to the United States. Not out of any great admiration for the country that had destroyed their homeland, but simply because it was the closest place to go. So, while everyone at La Diaspora was enjoying the fruits of the previous century's intercultural migration, there was also an understanding that the fruit ripened from the blossoms of greed and the seeds of insidious human rights violations. All factors still driving people to our borders today. Factors that demand reconciliation. That discussion, my friends, was a terrific appetizer. Listen, I think conversation is a bit of a lost art, unfortunately, and for a multitude of reasons, isolation with our electronic devices being a significant factor. But the net result of less conversation is even less understanding. Now, I'm not at all suggesting we can reduce all the world's problems to our inability and unwillingness to converse with, not just talk at each other. However, we don't take the art of conversation seriously enough either. And I'm thinking especially about all the leaders on today's world stage, all the politicians that supposedly exist to create international understanding. How is anything accomplished? How do we reconcile without serious, pointed, unabashed, unafraid conversation. I 
personally don't see how there is any sort of reconciliation without first having extremely painful conversations in which those who've committed trespass trespasses seriously own up to and move forward and move toward reparations for their actions. I'm looking at us, as in USA. Having authentic conversations means that sometimes, a lot of the time, I suppose, we will accidentally say hurtful things to one another, perhaps because of previous poor conditioning. I expect more of these misunderstandings as our language evolves to better reflect the diversity of being human. Moving forward, to have conversations that might encourage reconciliation, we need to grant each other some grace and embrace the changes. We should go into every conversation understanding that language, especially English, is changing rapidly. It's beneficial for us to gently give and graciously accept critiques about our word choices. And lest we stifle free speech, we also can't be afraid of accidentally offending each other. I often wonder if the world's leaders, Putin, Zelensky, Biden, Trump, Netanyahu, Hania from Hamas, Jinping in China, Bin Salman of the Saudis, ah, the Saudis, a family that owns a nation, by the way. I wonder if any of these people have ever had an honest, genuine conversation with each other, with anyone. And I don't mean sitting around a ginormous table surrounded by nationalist symbols in an otherwise empty, frigid room that could only ever produce icy ideas. I mean, Go into the local 7-Eleven to grab some pomegranate juices and sit on the park bench discussing the kids' soccer practice, or that time in high school when their crush rejected them, uh, and the other bazillion experiences all humans share regardless of ethnicity or nationality. Do our leaders, do any of us, bother to get to know one another personally? I find it hard to believe that anyone would lead their entire civilization into a global war if they knew their neighbors' stories and celebrated the kids' birthdays. Back in the day, I had a great friend from Costa Rica, Juan. Everyone called him Corky. He was a phenomenal timbalero and singer. We played almost every gig together, whether it was Latin or not, most every night of the week for at least a decade. And he would host a backyard party almost every weekend and a giant pig roast every few months. The parties were like UN meetings, only better. There were people from every country on the American continent, all cooking, eating, drinking, singing, and playing music, everyone a storyteller. We knew and cared about one another because we hung out and had conversations. I wish all the influential people putting the world at risk every day would take a break and hang out. Get to know each other like they're at a corky style cookout or sitting in La Diaspora. Especially since so many of the people these guys supposedly represent are literally in diaspora. I pray that our leaders learn empathy, that they come to understand each other's plight and rejoice in one another's triumphs as their own. I want uh, Kim Jong-un to call Emmanuel Macron, not to threaten nuclear annihilation, but because he's excited to share a story about their kids' first performance in the UN Global Dance Troupe. I want Putin to call Biden because the grandkids are both mathletes or to share any of the zillions of human moments we universally experience regardless of our cultural identities. My dream, because I believe in dreaming, is that we learn to talk and listen to each other because it's in conversation we rediscover our shared humanity. And I just don't see how we begin reconciling anything until we first recognize and agree that we are all human beings. Amen. I am curious today how we might engage in reconciling conversations. How might we engage in reconciling conversations. Throughout Lent, we're going to stay uh, in the big virtual room together, so I'll remove the spotlight. Take a few moments just to gather your thoughts, and then whenever you are ready, go ahead and jump in. How might we engage in reconciling conversations? <laughs> 